so now I want to write some code to stop the server gracefully uh, now this is completely optional as in you don't have to have to write this code and as you know if you start a server in Golang and if you uh, go to your PowerShell and terminal if you just press control C it is going to stop the server but this uh, code that I'm going to write is for stopping the server gracefully right the right way of stopping the server now like I said you don't have to do it but I'm uh, I'm going to do it and if you want to follow along you can do that so we're going to create a variable called stop channel it will be taken from os.signal and os.os is a package that I will have to uh, import verify stop chan os dot interrupt is going to interrupt my server okay so here like you see you can see i don't have my os uh, related packages so i want to import os and os slash signal maybe you already installed uh, imported it in the beginning but uh, you might notice that once you if you press control s if you try to save uh, this file uh, Golang will automatically, uh, like uh, at least the Golang uh, plugin, my uh, VS Core, it will t take away all the packages that I'm not using. So I'll have to write them again here sometimes. So that's why I had to write OS and OS signal again, even though I had imported them in the beginning. So after I do that, the squiggly lines below OS, they disappear. This is OS.notify, sorry for the wrong spelling. And so I have created uh, stop channel. Now I want to actually uh, stop my channel, which is this. And out here, towards the end of func main, I'll stop my channel. So I'll say stop chan. I'll say log dot print ln shutting down server. All right. And here, so I need to pass context to the server dot shutdown. Uh, function so that's what I'm trying to get here context dot with timeout context dot background and comma five dot second okay so this CTX uh, is something that I want to pass to my server dot shutdown function server is SRV which I had just created here if you remember HTTP.server and then I'm going to say differ cancel log.println server grace fully stopped so now this is uh, this part and this part these two lines this is slightly advanced code you don't have to write it you don't have to uh, you know follow along if you're a beginner even if you don't write this code uh, and if you just write down write your func main and if you start your server in golang uh, in, in your powershell or open to terminal or mac terminal for that instance and if you press Control c the server will stop there <laughs> it doesn't have an option it will stop but uh, this is the right way to do things uh, to stop a channel right now you may not have uh, read about golang channels and go routines so it might uh, look very confusing to you but this is this is very very standard uh, you know stuff and uh, this is actually the uh, very uh, the standard way of stopping a golang server web server so uh, you will get used to it and now that we have created our functions to shut down the golang server uh, now let's go ahead and create our home handler okay so before my func main I'm going to say func home handler review http dot response writer and start http dot request so we'll uh, as part of every uh, function you'll know that uh, we have a response and a request right for every API you have a response and a request and the response uh, is inside w and the request is inside r so we'll have to we'll be able to refer whatever request the user sends to this function with the help of r which is a pointer to http.request function and so i'm going to try and 
uh, so now what I want to do now is I want to uh, serve the static slash home dot TPL file. So I don't have a static folder in my project right now, as you can see, but very soon we'll be creating a static uh, folder and we'll be just copying and pasting a home dot TPL file, which will be served uh, whenever somebody goes to the home, uh, you know, the home, what do you call it? Uh, home page basically. So I want a template to be rendered. So I have my renderer RND, which I have created here and dot template right so dot template is a function that i get with this renderer which is uh, a, a package that i've imported and uh, w is the response that i want to send to the front end right along with the response uh, i want to send a status 200 which is status okay saying that everything is all right and i want to send a string with the like I said, the static slash home dot TPL file. I'll, I'll give you this, this uh, file uh, on a link uh, and then you can just download it and, uh, and you know, install it and or basically keep it in a folder in static and I'll create the folder. I'll show it to you. And in that video, probably I'll put it in the description box below so you don't get confused right now. And so like, so what's happening here is basically if somebody goes to my home, uh, which is local host, host slash, uh, it will just render the static, uh, sorry, there's no slash before this. So it'll just render the static slash home TPL file where static is a folder and home TPL will be a file that I'll give you shortly. And then you will have check error and error. Okay. So we're going to check for error with the help of our check error function that we have already created. So that's how the home handler works. Now let's create our fetch to do's function. So we'll first create the fetch to do's function, then we'll create the create, then we'll handle the delete one, then we'll handle the update one because update one is the most, uh, as you can, you can say complicated, but I won't say complicated, but it has the most details, right? So a lot of work to be done there. So, and fetch to do's is the most, uh, straightforward so we'll have fetch to do's here and this is something that you have to always do http dot response writer comma r asterisk http dot request so by the way these are the home handler fetch tools these are all functions that we've already uh, told to go lang in, in our func main that home to handler will be a function to do handlers will be a function and inside to do handlers I'll have a fetch to do's right so that's the fetch to do's that I'm creating out here in case uh, there is any doubt so I want to create a to do's variable which will be of type to do model it will be a slice basically of to do model and I have to do model out here it's a struct right struct to do model has already been defined so it's a slice of sli uh, type to do model, right? And it's empty right now. And so I'll say if error. Now I'll get my to dos from my database, right? So we have already defined our very uh, our constant collection name earlier. Collection name is to do. So in that collection name. So I'll first hit DB, which is DB. I have defined my DB, which is my session going on with the database name, which is the database name is demo uh, underscore to do. It will MongoDB automatically creates this database for you. You don't have to do it manually. And uh, so it's going to go to my database, going to go to the collection name that I've already defined. It's going to find. So uh, MongoDB has a find function. Uh, you may already be knowing this. It's going to find all of the to do's there so that's I'll say all and I'll say ampersand to do's which basically is this so give me all of the to do's in this variable that I've just defined earlier and uh, then we'll say if error not equal to nil we'll say renderer dot json HTTP dot status processing renderer dot M will say message failed to fetch the two. 
so whenever we say uh, i think by now you must have figured out that whenever you say error not equal to null that means that basically the error is there and we are doing something to handle the error and here we're just going to print out the error and after that we'll return okay so once we have been able to get our to do's what we'll do is we'll use our to do list we'll create a variable called to do list which will be of type which will be a slice of type to do uh, now let me show you what I'm trying to say here so as you know to do model is something else this I will get these on data from uh, MongoDB so that's why first we created a to do uh, a variable called to do's which was a, a of type to do model which was a slice of type to do model and that helped us to get our piece on data but now uh, to work with uh, in the front end we need json data so that's why we have another struct called to do so that's why i told you that even if you don't understand this right now uh, bear with me you will understand it later on so now that we have our json data out here now we want to be able to uh, you know uh, go over so what we'll do is we'll go over all these to do's and then one by one we'll populate our to-do list which will be of a json type okay so even if you don't understand this right now what i just said not a problem i'll take you over this right now and you'll understand it really easily so we're going to range over it this is like a for each loop in uh, javascript So uh, range actually is uh, the combination of for in and for off loops of JavaScript. If you are comf comfortable with JavaScript, that is, you will get both the value and the iterator here. So uh, the iterator, since we are not going to use it, we have to put this blank uh, character out here because uh, otherwise Golang, uh, you know, would want us to use it. So Golang is not like JavaScript. You, if whatever you uh, define, you have to use it. And it's going to give you an error if you don't. So that's why uh, the best way, if you don't, if you're not using the iterator here, because I'm going to use it as a for off loop in the sense I'm going to uh, get the value itself, not the uh, you know the iteration variable. So if I'm not using that, let's say an i or a k or j, whatever here, I'm not using that. So I'm just going to put a blank character out here. And uh, so I'm going to create a to-do list which I've defined here, which will be of type to-do, which will be JSON that I want to send to the front end. And I'm going to range over, basically. Uh, sorry, yeah, I'm going to range over to do's, which is uh, the BSON data that, that I just received from uh, my database, and I'm going to uh, append one by one to my to do list a singular to do. So one by one, I'll uh, you know uh, append to do's to it. So it will have an ID. ID I'll get from T. T is basically every single to do that I've got from my database. So it will have an ID dot I, uh, hex. I'll convert it into hex. And then I'll have title T dot title. And then I'll have completed T dot completed. I have created at T dot created at and that's about it so i'll just explain to you again if you have not understood uh to do model our bson data that help that we get from uh, our database so we need a slice of this type of a struct right to be able to get uh, to do's from the database and we want to now convert this into json and then uh, you know create uh, another slice which will be of type to do and it will uh, create multiple uh, which will contain multiple of such to do's and that's the one that we want to send to the front end and so that's why we have to range over the to do's that we get from our database and then we have to append to the to do list which is of type uh, to do and then we create a list of all these to do's right by taking id title complete that and uh, complete and create that and finally in our fetch to do's function We'll have renderer JSON, and now we want to send the response to the front end, right? So we'll say status OK because we need to say that everything is 200, everything is all right. Renderer dot m 
data and we'll just render the to-do list hope that makes sense okay so we have re received our list of to-dos here and the next function that we'll take a look at will be create to-do and like I said and then we'll have delete and then we'll have our update to-do so stay tuned <laughs>